Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I'm excited to talk about something I always like to look at every year. I find it super fascinating. Um, like many nonprofits, the FAF, the F uh, Financial Accounting Foundation, um, produces an annual report that it puts on its website every year. And just a couple of weeks ago, they issued their 2022 annual report. They do have a December year end. And so um, I always love to look at it and to look at what they're doing and some of their financials, because honestly, they have to make financial statements just like any other nonprofit, and they put them out there and they get an audit opinion. And obviously they wrote the accounting standard, so they did get a clean opinion this year. Um, but I just think it's such an incredible opportunity to learn more about what the FAF does. And so I wanted to share a little bit about it with you uh, and how you can find it. So I'm gonna show you on our website here. So we're gonna go to the FAF website. Um, you can put in Accounting Foundation. You can also go to fasb.org and then just click here at the top. And then you're going to scroll over as we go through this, uh, and we're going to click on the 2022 annual report. And it brings you to this awesome website. It's one of my favorite. Um, and it kind of gives you an option. You can read just the message from the FAF or the FASB or the GASB. These are our chairs. And again, both of them relatively new in their terms. They started during COVID back in 2020, uh, as well as our new chairs here as well. Uh, and so lots of really cool things going on. You can watch the videos here. And then they have information about their advisory group. So if you wanted to volunteer, this is a great way to um, get involved and to learn more about those groups. But I'm going to click on the um, annual report here uh, and it's going to open up in its full format. Again, it's fun to kind of click around, um, but I'm going to show you sort of how they have it set up. Uh, and so just like anybody else, they talk a little bit about their uh, catchphrase standards that work. Uh, and so from Main Street to Wall Street, right? So private entities all the way up to Wall Street, they talk a little bit about about it. Um, the last couple of years, they've been doing this sort of watercolor item. They used to have more actual photos in there that kind of changed their vibe, um, but I like it. Um, they talk a little bit about um, the FAF, who has celebrated their 50th anniversary last year. FASB will celebrate their 50th anniversary this year, and next year the GASB will celebrate their 40th. They didn't uh, come out until 1984, so a little bit later, about 10 years after the FASB. Um, and so they talk a little bit about um, what they're working on, right? What are their big items? Very consistent with their strategic plan that they put out. Um, so a little bit about that. Um, they talk a little bit about the transition because Catherine uh, or Kathleen did um, switch off, and so we got a new chair, and so we have some new items and then some pictures of the individuals and some of them you might recognize they've had some pretty big uh, you know Tim Christian for example well known in the profession many of you will recognize lots of these uh, individuals and so they do have pictures um, uh, Rick uh, from uh, Pinion he's uh, been very popular also with NASBA so you probably recognize him as well uh, and quite a few others Tim Ryan uh, another major uh, player in the industry so uh, lots of very cool people uh, as we go through this and then they talk about what their goals are right just like any other entity. They kind of walk through their goals and then they have their FASB chair message and then they have the, uh, the members. And as you can see here, uh, right now we have one, two, three, four women and we have one, two, three, four men. Hillary is a technical director. She's not technically uh, a board member. So we are going to get our first um, majority female board in, uh, we did uh, in July of 2023. So next year, we're actually going to have some more women uh, outweighing the men uh, on here. So again, very exciting uh, period of time. And then they talk a little bit about what they issued, what they got done in terms of that, their advisory groups, how did they celebrate that 50 years? And then they walk through what their key timelines are, some of the big things that's happened over the years. So this is a really big history lesson. Gatsby again has a little bit more time before they celebrate theirs, but they still do talk about what they've covered. Um, while nonprofits under FASB GAP, because they are a nonprofit organization, do not have to issue MDNA, uh, the FASB chooses to provide MDNA. And so they do give a little bit of an overview about how they're run, uh, a little bit about the key numbers and summaries. I always love some of the um, pictures that is in there pretty much every year. Um, so this is something you can look at um, and do a nice comparison. Uh, they always do a year over year, um, but you can kind of look at trends for a long period of time. 
And then if you keep scrolling, you get to their financial statements. And so again, this is a not-for-profit organization. So we're gonna have a statement of activities. And again, how are they funded? They're funded obviously through support fees, whether it's through Dodd-Frank or through the SEC. And then obviously if you are buying the codification, uh, you are uh, obviously uh, in some of those scenarios, the publishing uh, funding, and then obviously there are contributions. Those are predominantly people who choose not to get paid for their services. Then they have expenses broken out by obviously FASB versus GESB, uh, and then the cost of obviously publishing. Uh, one of the reasons why they are not producing as many paper documents, the COD is not being produced in paper anymore, makes me sad, um, but it is obviously available online. And then you can learn a little bit about their balance sheet uh, and their statement of cash flows. So what are their uh, cash flow look like uh, in this? And again, this is in thousands of dollars. Uh, and then their notes to the financial statement. So just like any other nonprofit, you can kind of take a look at their financial standards. Um, I'm always a big fan of this because they do have like a great lease uh, documentation here. They do have, um, they had the best rev rack for nonprofits when it first came out because of their publishing revenue. So you can see some 606 application. Um, so I often go here because they have very basic financials, right? It's not a super complex organization. And so their notes tend to be really helpful if you're looking for something a little bit more basic, um, but meeting the requirements because again, the FASB writes the requirements. So we would hope that they get them correct. And then as you go through them, we do have RSM who does the um, their audit and they have this lovely clean opinion. They are using the new opinion format with the opinion first as you go through this. Uh, and so uh, nothing, there's no emphasis or any kind of other elements, just your plain Jane opinion, but that works for us. There is no uh, key audit matters or anything like that. And then they have some more uh, closing pictures here and then their mission. So if you haven't taken the opportunity to take a look at something like this, I do recommend uh, you learn a little bit about how they're funded, some of the work that they're doing, uh, and just to get a better understanding of the FASB, GASB, and the FAF and how they work together. So I'm a big fan, always encourage you guys to take a look. This is public information. All right, uh, and today is a very important day uh, at GLS. We are celebrating the one year anniversary of Money Matters for Nonprofits uh, every year on National Not-for-Profit Day. Uh, that's when it was first published back in 2022, last year. Uh, and so we're doing the one year anniversary of Money Matters for Nonprofit celebration. So if you haven't picked it up and you work with not-for-profits or you serve on the board of a nonprofit, we would love your support and your Amazon review. Um, also keep in touch, obviously you can subscribe to our newsletter, you can follow us on LinkedIn, and you can also look at some of our CPE offerings. So we are so grateful for all of you. This is a big day for us. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. We are very grateful. All right, with that, I'm gonna thank you again for joining us and I look forward to seeing you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.